Shalom friends, shalom, grace and peace be unto you. Welcome back to my channel. What a blessing it is to be here again as we come to look into the word of God. God is indeed good to us and we are, we are just thankful. We continue to praise him for all the blessings he continue to pour into our lives. And we also continue to acknowledge the fact that he is creator of the universe. He is creator of mankind and all glory, all praise and all honor belong to him. So we are at the beginning of another week. It's a week um, we're at the beginning of another week and um, we depend uh, totally on God's divine providence for our survival. We cannot make it without him. And so with that, we commit the upcoming days, right, into his hand. And uh, I, I want to put out a challenge to us, all of us today. And this challenge actually come from the word of God. The apostle Paul in uh, Ephesians chapter five, verse one, he instruct the believers. He said, therefore be imitators of God as beloved brethren or beloved children. How do we imitate God? God is holy. God is described as a consuming fire. We remember in scripture that Moses wanted to see the face of God. Moses wanted to know more about God. He wanted to know more about this awesome God. And so Moses wanted to see the face of God. And God says, no, you can't see my face and live. And so how do we imitate God? How do we, you know, imitate this God who is indeed a consuming fire? Also, um, for the, 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 the text for this session comes from Deuteronomy chapter 26, from verse 16 through 19. And I'll be reading these verses in a few, but here we're going to see a command also where Israel was commanded to walk in God's ways. And in walking God, in God's ways, they were supposed to obey all the decrees and his commandments and all that. So today we're going to be learning, you know, how to imitate God. And it's, it's a challenge for this week. It's a challenge that we need to put into practice um, because the more we know about God is the more we are drawn to God, right? So from scripture, we learn that we're called to a life of holiness. We're called to a walk of holiness. It's a requirement, not from man, but it is actually a requirement from God. A life of holiness speaks to a life of separation, a life that reflects the very nature of God, considering that we are made in the image and the likeness of God. And so from the beginning of creation, God made distinctions. He set, he set apart, he makes separation. He separate light from darkness, separate night from day, land from water. And the creation story speaks much as to, you know, how important these separations were. And so God desires us to be separated also so that we could reflect him, his likeness. And so to imitate him, we now need to understand the importance of separation. And so as we look at the relationship with, with Yeshua and his father, um, as Christ or Yeshua is the likeness of his father, he was a true form. He was a true figure, the true character or representation of him, right? Um, Yeshua taught that he came to lead us to the Father. It is through him as we come to faith in him, as we come to believe, yeah, in him. Atonement has made it made for our sins and he now calls us to, he lead us to the Father. And so we remember the Lord's prayer when he prayed. That's what he prayed for. When we pray, we say, our Father, he directs us to his Father. And so I already made the point that the Apostle Paul too called the believers to be imitators of God. We are to imitate Christ 
and to model our lives after him. This is the crux of the matter, people of God. Our life, our daily living should reflect that of Christ. In other words, we are basically called to mimic, to look alike. All right, and mimic in this sense has a positive connotation of Im emulating a pattern set by an admired standard, an admired mentor. So the Apostle Paul is not indicating that this meant when he says that we should imitate, um, imitate God. He is not suggesting or indicating that this meant we should um, think or feel that we are also divine or we are omniscient or we possess any of God, you know, or we possess any power like that, so to speak. But the truth is our character, our way of living, our values should reflect that of God. This is not about perfection. As we all know that we will not experience, I'm sorry, we will not experience perfection in this life. As long as sin and death exist, we will, you know, we, we will live, we will not experience perfection in this life but in the life to come. And that is why it becomes necessary to reflect the ways and the character of our Father as we too contemplate our eternal destiny. And so, as I said today, we're, gonna, we're going to have a better understanding of what it looks like, right? To, to, to walk in the ways of God or how to imitate him. Micah, the prophet Micah, in chapter 6, verse 8, he says, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord requires of you to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly before your God. He has shown you the instructions and the principles for daily living, and it is before our very eyes, right? So if, if you follow the Lord's commandments, you cannot go wrong because this book called the Bible, the Word of God, is our manual for daily living. It's our manual to keep us on the right path, right? It's our manual to lead us to the path of holiness. And when we spend time in the word, when we spend time reading the word of God, when we're guided by the Holy Spirit, then this is, you know, we are on the right path, the path to holiness. Recently, I was having a conversation with a colleague of mine, and I really made the point that what God requires from us is not as overwhelming as we may think, right? Because sometimes we allow people to you know, to burden us down with a lot of stuff unnecessarily. We allow people to basically put burdens on us, which but the scripture did not so require. And Yeshua made a point to this when he met up with some of the Pharisees, right? And he even said, you tie up heavy burden, you become cumbersome load and you put them on people's shoulder but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them and so it is important that you know as we listen as we listen to to uh, to teaching i mean there are so many persons teaching from the word of god that we are ask the holy spirit that we ask the holy spirit to Give us spirit of discernment and to understand exactly what scripture is saying to us. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, God commanded us to love him with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our might. And also love our neighbors as we love ourselves. So it is from these foundational pillars we learn to walk in the ways of the Lord 
It's a matter of loving God and loving man. And these things should basically characterize our lifestyle, our daily living. He wants us to model them, right? To put these practices in place, put them um, on display so the world, those in darkness, can see and be drawn into the light. And I believe there's a danger when we pay scant regard to God's instruction, right? This is a hard truth, but, you know, if you feel that a simple walk of faith, meaning if you feel that the fact that I believe in Jesus, the Messiah, the fact that he, he cleansed me from my sins, right? And of course, this is what we do every day, because every day we should be making confession of all our sins, right? If we feel it is good enough to say I accept him and leave it at that, then I want you to know that you are basically in danger because there is more to it, right? We are called to imitate our father, to look like him. And so now we need to put into practice what he does, right? Um, the apostle Paul or James talk about faith. Faith without work is dead. So while we come to faith, we also need to display the work. And we know that we are not saved by work, right? But we are saved by the grace of God. So we all know that it is pointless to say we love God and we despise our brother. First John chapter 4, verse 20 says, Whoever claims to love God yet hates his brother or sister is a liar. Um, for whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom you have not seen. So it is a practical walk. It is, it is what we put into practice and it is what we do on a daily basis. So um, the book of Deuteronomy, right? I missed quite a bit of studies from this. Um, but from the Torah portion yesterday, I want to read from Deuteronomy chapter 26, from verse 16 through 19. And here Moses is giving his final instruction to the people of Israel. And he's reminding them of the obligations to follow all the instructions in the Torah. And he says, the Lord your God commands you this day to follow these decrees and laws carefully observe them with all your heart and with all your soul you have declared you have declared um i'm sorry you have declared this day that the lord is your god and that you will walk in his ways that you will keep his decrees and you will keep his commands and laws and that you will obey him and the Lord has declared this day that you are his people, his treasured possession as he promised, and that you are to keep all his commands. He has declared that he will set you in praise, in fame and honor, high above all the nations he has made, and that you will be a people holy to the Lord your God as he promised. Amen. Today, you have proclaimed to the Lord to be your God, and that you will walk in his ways and keep his statutes, his commandments, and his judgments, and that you will obey his voice. Also today, the Lord proclaimed you to be a special people, just as he promised, right? That you, um, and that he will set you high above all the nations which he made in praise, in name, and in honor, and that you may be a holy people to the Lord your God, just as he has spoken. And so the call is not different, although we are in a different culture and time zone. As we come to faith and experience the forgiveness of sin and the cleansing in our lives, we too are called upon to walk in his ways. We are called upon to obey his commandments, to obey his voice. And I want you to take note that it is actually a commandment. It's a command to walk in the ways of God. It's a command 
to imitate him. And to imitate him, we are looking at Yeshua. How did he live, right? Moses said, no, Israel, what does the Lord your God require from you but to fear the Lord your God and to walk in his ways? So we read that in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. So the commandment, walk in the ways of God, should reflect our daily living. Daily living. You know, we come across people so often who live under the false impression that when God makes a command, he's trying to take away our freedom, our fun time, and all these things. But I'm here to tell you that that is a lie from the enemy. The greatest freedom you can have is freedom in God. Of course, he set boundaries. Right? But why? For your own protection, for your own good, for our own protection and for our own good. So when God gives a command, it is always, always, always for our own good. Right? Let us go back into the time of Yeshua. One on one occasion, an expert of the law stood up to test him. He says, teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? Yeshua replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your might and love your neighbor as yourself. And Yeshua said, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. What is this telling us? It is telling us that to live a fulfilled life, to live a life walking in the spirit to live a life that glorifies God, to live a life that imitates, that look like him, to imitate him, means that we must go to the commandments he gave and we should live by them. And this is how you have life. He says, do this and you will live. Do this and you will enjoy the fullness of life. Do this and you will understand what life is all about. So the point is, the point is, when we obey God's commandments for life, it's not taking away our freedom. We are actually living and we are being drawn closer to him, to his holiness. So the point is, when we do, when we walk, when we live, when we model, when we represent the word in the fullest sense, we experience the fullness and the newness of life. That is what it is about. In St. Matthew chapter 25, Jesus is talking about judging the nations. And he says, um, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him. He is going to separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goat. And he will set the sheep on his right hand and the goat on his left. And the king will say to those on the right, come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. And the righteous will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of my brethren, you did it to me. Right? And then he will also say to those on the left, um, depart from me, you cursed into the everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you didn't take me in. I was naked and you didn't clothe me, sick and in prison and you did not 
visit me. And he says, then they also will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or stranger or naked or sick and in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them saying, assuredly, I say to you, in as much as you did it not to me, to the one, assuredly, I say to you, in as much as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. This is the word of the Lord. If you didn't do it to, and, and Yeshua, he was actually speaking to his Jewish brethren. And I think this is an important point we need to look at in that, and, and this should draw us, you know, into understanding that when Yeshua said, whatever you do to my brothers, my brethren, you do to me, he was actually speaking of his the Jewish people, right? And so we could also ask the question, how can we help? I mean, his Jewish brothers, how can we support them? What can we do, right? And if there's nothing else we can do, we can pray. We can pray over Israel and we can always pray over the Jewish people. So the point is to walk in the ways of God looks something like this. This is what it looks like, right? Doing good to people. And that is why I say it is good enough that we believe but we can't leave it there. We have to take it further. We have to move higher in our walk with the Lord daily. To walk in the ways of God looks something like what I just read. It includes clothing the naked, visiting the sick, comforting the mourners, feeding the hungry, assisting the poor, have mercy on the sinful, rescue the perishing, heal the brokenhearted, restore home and family, and do good to us. Do you know these are all God's commandments here? somewhere in all of the commandments, right? This is how we do it. He is the God of absolute integrity. He is the God of truth. He is the God of holiness. He is the God of justice. He is the God of righteousness, righteous in every decision. And God is the fundamental principle of godliness. And so people of God, so we understand that what we do, what we do, we are not saved by works. But the God commandments are what we do. So when we do the things God requires us to do, we are drawn into his holiness and we are actually reflecting what he looks like, his character, his nature. Remember we said we are made in the image and the likeness of God. God is the fundamental principle of godliness. right? And so Yeshua, perfect example perfect example as a man he would never disobey his heavenly father he would never ever ever disobey his heavenly father and so he's here encouraging us to imitate our father that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven in saint matthew chapter 5 verse 45 he sat with his disciples on the um, on the Sermon on the Mount, right? He sat with them. And he says, you may be sons of, of your father who is in heaven when you imitate, when you do what he says, right? When you imitate him. I want, people of God, I want us to get this. You become sons and daughters of your father in heaven when you come into total obedience in walking in his ways. Israel made a commitment, we're gonna walk in his ways. And I feel this is a remarkable statement here. He's saying, when you come to faith and believe in me, it doesn't stop here. You now need to do the commandments to become sons of my father who is in heaven right? We need to understand that work and faith coexist. They work together hand in hand, like hand in a glove. And I want you to take note of this. I want you to take note of this because um, I'm going back to, right, I'm going back to 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 um, Deuteronomy chapter twenty six. 
today, verse 17, today, you have proclaimed to be your God. You have proclaimed the Lord to be your God and that you will walk in his ways and keep his statutes. That was what, um, when we came to faith, Yeshua says that if you want to follow me, right? If you want to be my disciple or Talmudim in Hebrew, you have to forsake all to follow me, right? And so um, if you want to walk in his ways and keep his statutes, his commandments and his judgment, so and that you will obey his voice, he says also today the Lord proclaim you to be a special people. That's it. When we come into this obedience, we become actually a set apart special people of God who are identifiable people will see and know that we are set apart and we belong to God and that he will set you high above all nations which he has made right it's not that he doesn't care about other nations but he's saying of Israel he said to us that I'm going to set you above all nations which I have made in praise in name and in honor and that you may be a holy people to the Lord your God just as he has spoken. I feel and I believe in my spirit right now that we should be ready to receive the blessing, the blessings that God have in store. So we talk a lot about blessings, you know, but one thing we tend to forget is that blessing doesn't happen like that. It is hinged to our obedience all the time in scripture we see that abraham was blessed because of his obedience every time all of these patriarchs we see what they did and it was out of their obedience that they were blessed and the blessing for us also deuteronomy chapter 28 speak a lot about the blessings for it is the blessings for obedience right so next time we take this up to read remember it is the blessings of obedience it's, it says if you fully obey the lord your god and careful carefully follow all his commandments i give you today the lord your god will set you high above the nations on earth and all these blessings will come upon you and accompany you and if you obey the lord your god and i know some translation says will overtake you. Can you imagine blessings overtaking you? I remember I hear, um, I heard somebody did a song, blessing running you down. Can you imagine the blessings of the Lord running you down when you walk in obedience to his word, right? You're going to be blessed. People of God, we are going to be blessed when we walk, when we begin to imitate him, when we begin to be merciful, when we begin to show love. We're living in a time when there is, you can hardly, I mean, so much is preached about love, but it is hard to see love in action. It is hard to see, you know, that bowel of compassion and mercy be extended to people, right? So the blessing of the Lord is going to overtake us when we begin to imitate him, when we begin to look like him, when we begin to have this strong desire for him. But guess what? I know that we can't do it in our own strength. And so we depend on the power of the rock, the power of the Holy Spirit to be working in us, the power of God to be released in us, to be the people of God that we are supposed to be. And this is a challenge for us this week. I'm putting out to you, start your week, right? Begin your week with this concerted effort in saying, I'm going to do things differently this week. So the question is, is there a person you probably have not spoken to in a while? Is there somebody in your life you probably need to forgive? Is there somebody who hurt you beyond the core? right and you feel that boy i can't let this one go this is a good time as a matter of fact i i i i, I spoke about um we are in the month of elul on god's calendar right and uh, it's a time when uh, it is said that the king is in the field and actually um the month of elul speaks to the time when moses went back on mount sinai to receive the second set of commandments from God, right? It's a time when God is 
I mean, his hands are wide open and he's just, he's just giving out. He's just giving out, you know, he's just giving out his blessings and his mercies for people who want to receive. And so now is a good time to release somebody, to let somebody go, right? And if it is, if it is even just one area you want to take up this challenge with, Okay, I'm going to be loving. I'm going to begin to love my parents and respect them. I'm going to begin to worship the God of Israel. I'm going to begin to do all of these things. How about that? It's a challenge for us. And I pray that we will have a blessed week ahead. And I pray over your life also that you will have a productive week, that you will have a great week, that the destroyer will not come near you, that God will not allow the enemy, right, to, 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 to um, destroy or to take away from you all the things that he has blessed you with. So it's a prayer of my heart that you will have a great week as we continue, as we strive, to imitate and to look like our Father. May God bless you richly. Thanks for listening. Thank you.